In this episode of True 911 Calls, an operator hanging up on a child turns fatal, an FBI agent calls after shooting his estranged wife, and a man crashes into a restaurant killing his family. Please help me. You promise you will help me? Those were the words of an eight-year-old girl begging a 911 dispatcher for help after her parents were shot in March 2010. It was not until four minutes into the call that the operator said she was sending help. The dispatcher then disconnected the call and left the girl on the phone alone. Emergency 911, we have trouble. Um, my mom is in the basement and um, I need emergency and I need hello. Where at? Um, I'm at, and I'll go ask my mommy. Mommy, uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you where we at. I'll tell you, I need. Let me speak to your mom. No, she's, she's almost dead. Mommy, where are we at? Tell me, I got the police on the phone. Tell me. Mommy, tell me. Where we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? I said, I called 911. Where are we at? Where are we at? I was outside. I was outside. Yeah, I was outside. Um, I'll tell them where we at. Um, we are at. I'm outside and. Okay. Let me speak to your mom. I don't know who he is. Okay, call your mom on the phone if she's there. She's almost dead, please. Okay, you, 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 I can't help you without you helping me. Let me see who else in the house. Nobody's else in the house. Okay, you need to give me an address. You need to calm down and give me an address. I don't know where you're at. You have to give me an address. Agnes? Is Agnes? Yes. Hello? Yes. Okay. Stop screaming. My mom is almost dead. Okay, you know yes, ma'am. Okay. I need huh? you to calm down and give me a location. Right. Please help me. You promise you will help me? I'm going to help you once you help me, okay? Go on the court. Can you open up the door? No. Do you see any mail? Uh, no. Um, I can tell you the address. What's the address? Um, uh, if I can find it, um, it is, um, I don't see it, but I'm sorry. Okay, calm down. down, calm down. Okay. Is there any mail on the table or in a drawer? How old What's are you? That? How old are you? I'm eight years old. Do you see any mail on the table or any mail in the drawer? No. Do you but see any mail on your mom's dresser? My, my mom doesn't live here. Okay, you were just screaming at your mom. Who? Okay, who okay, do you live I, with? Huh? Who do you live with? I live with my mother. Your Ma mother? Yes. I'll, okay, I'm look, look on her dresser. You just said your mom don't live there. Yeah, but I'm looking, I'm looking for everything, and I can't find it. Please, she's almost dead. Okay, you need to calm down and find me something with an address. I can't help you without an address. Uh, okay, I'll try and look outside again. Open the you... door. Open up the door and look at the at the porch what? up on the What's porch. Open up the door. Look okay. on the porch. Give me those numbers off your porch. All right. You said no one else. There, I hear someone in the back. Oh, that's my sister. Okay, I'm coming. how old is your sister? Okay, okay, I know her address now. How what? old is your sister? She's six. Um, um, I know her address now. What is the street? Um, is it, I can tell you, um, this, but it's... You have to tell me the street. Okay, it's... Yes. Is and this I a house or is this a, a two-family flat? It's a house. Um, what is wrong with your mom? She got shot. Somebody shot her? Yes. Who shot your mom? 
I don't know who's from Where's Dolly. your mom at? The downstairs in the basement. Who is the guy? I don't know. <laughs> she was just some guy. Is she bleeding from where? Yeah, she's bleeding from, I don't know, from her head or something. I think it's from her head. Okay, I request police and EMS. She's still breathing. Um, my dad is not. Your dad? Said, let me speak to your dad. No, he's dead. My mom is still breathing. So he, your mom and dad was shot? Yes. In an attempt to send help, the dispatcher tried to have the distraught child locate any type of address so that she knew where to send needed aid. The young girl could read off the first few letters of the street name which helped authorities locate the Northwest Detroit home. When officers arrived, they found the 8-year-old and her 6-year-old half-sister upstairs. According to Detroit Police Chief Warren Evans, the two girls were the only ones at the house during the shooting that killed their 26-year-old mother, Monica Botello, and her 26-year-old boyfriend, Purcell Carson. However, the girls didn't witness the actual altercation. The children were reportedly visiting the home at the time of the shooting, which is why the girl didn't know the address. Investigators reported that the couple might have been gunned down by an acquaintance. Derek Smith and another suspect were the main suspects for the murder of the couple. A warrant for first-degree murder was issued for Smith. According to state correction records, the 42-year-old had convictions for kidnapping, armed robbery, and assault dating back to 1986. Records also showed that Carson had served a bid for a drug offense and was in jail with Smith. The 911 dispatcher was accused of responding cold-heartedly to a child pleading for help as her mother lay dying and had been disciplined. Police Chief Evans said that the dispatcher acted appropriately by sending a car in a timely fashion, but added that she could have shown more sensitivity towards the girl as she discovered her mother and her mother's boyfriend had been fatally shot. Reporters added that the call was made from a cell phone, making it harder to track the exact location, whereas a landline would have made it easier to find the address. Trained to eliminate threats at any cost, on April 19, 2013, FBI agent Arthur Art Gonzalez reported that he had shot his 42-year-old estranged wife, Julie Cerna Gonzalez. He claimed he acted in self-defense after she attacked him with a knife. 911, what city? Hey, can you get an ambulance to the cop, uh, deputy over to 59 what? And she just attacked me with a knife and I had to shoot her. Okay. I need the Please. Okay, I have huh? help. I have help on the way. You said street. Okay, stay on the line with me. Is she breathing? Um, I don't know. Hang on a second. Are you okay? In the hurry. Okay, I can't I'm you're speaking too fast. A L B Okay. Julie. Okay, are you in the no, Montrusis, no, Doniana? No, no, ma'am. Stafford, California, uh, Stafford, Virginia. Okay, this is for Las Cruces, New Mexico. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> are you located in Las Cruces, New Mexico? I'm in Virginia. I'm in Virginia. You're in Virginia? Yeah. Okay, I need you to stay on the line with me. I'm calling 911 on my cell phone as well. Give me one moment, okay? I have help on the way. Give me one second. Thank you. I need someone. Can you send a deputy and an ambulance to. My, my wife just attacked me with a knife and I had to shoot her. Where's your gun at? I'm sorry? Where it's is the my, gun? It's on my holster. I, I'm an, an FBI agent. Please, please hurry. And you're an FBI agent? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, where is your weapon at right now? I need it secure. It's on my holster. Okay, can you secure your weapon? Yes. What, what oh, can you put it somewhere? I've already got help on the way. Fire, yeah, yeah, yeah. please, and rescue. I'll put it right on. The, I'll put it right on the counter. Okay. Absolutely. And then I want you to go. Is anybody in the house? No, just me. It's I just you. Know. Just you and your wife. Yes. Okay. And she attacked you with a knife first. Yeah. Okay. I'll, can you go okay. get? Got me in the arm. Huh? Okay. I'm gonna get you over there with it. Okay. I want you to get her on the floor flat. And we're gonna. Okay. Tell me if she's breathing. It doesn't look like she is. Not breathing? Okay, can you get her flat on the floor? And I'm going to start CPR instructions with you, okay? Okay. 
43-year-old Art told investigators that he was surprised to find his estranged wife in his kitchen. He had taken the day off, had lunch with a friend, and gone home. To his surprise, Julie was there. The couple exchanged words, and before he knew it, she'd allegedly lunged at him with a knife. The 43-year-old fired four bullets into her chest, killing her instantaneously. He immediately called 911. The couple met in 1995 while Julie attended college in northern New Mexico. Soon after, they tied the knot. The couple also welcomed two boys. The children kept Julie busy at home, except for a few months each fall when she'd help out at a local Halloween store. Art later joined the FBI as a field agent in California. Julie's previous boss, Kim Scott, and co-worker Leah Lucero were suspicious of Julie's husband. According to Lucero, Art wasn't a friendly man. He said he would call my cell phone repeatedly if he couldn't get a hold of Julie, redial, 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 and he would yell into the phone at me. Art would also show up at the store often as many as four times a day. However, the FBI agent insisted that his wife had a drinking problem. According to him, Julie was so unstable that she'd almost attacked him with a knife once before. So you guys have been together since you started your FBI career, and I walked all the way through. Yeah. Isn't that how we got married first month of kind of relationship that you had with your wife? Actually, up until the point that four years ago, it was... Maybe it was it. I don't know what to her. Something, something happened. <clears throat> four years ago, it was it was nice marriage. You, you know, she... Uh, <clears throat> she started drinking. Okay. Uh, wasn't taking care of the boys. You know, brought dope into the house. What we're gonna do? We we um, had to call. I had to had to call deputies on her and, and, and watch cruises for that. Um, Was she violent out there? Uh, yeah. Well, to a certain degree, yeah. I mean, oh. never at the point where I had to, there was more more verbal. She got violent here. Julie was described by people who knew her as a wonderful woman who loved her kids, liked to smile, and kept physically fit. The victim's parents were heartbroken over their daughter's brutal death. It's kind of like ping pong. You, you get your hopes up that it's going to be resolved, and you hope the resolution is favorable. You hope for justice to be served. Described her to be gentle. Her dad, Ray Serna, said she would tackle anything in the world, and she'd be successful at it. She could do anything. Almost a year after Art shot and killed Julie, the 18-year-old FBI veteran stood accused of voluntary manslaughter. Art maintained that he did not plan to kill his wife, but felt compelled to protect himself after she violently confronted him with a weapon in hand. Those who supported Julie did not buy his story. Commonwealth's attorney Eric Olson argued that Julie was killed without justification. Art manipulated the crime scene to fit his story, including placing a knife in her hand after she died. Olson described what he claimed was a clear case of unjustifiable homicide. He argued that by the time Art Gonzalez filed for divorce, he was already deeply in love with a young woman in her 20s, Kara Cast. According to testimony, Art and Cast stopped dating toward the end of that year after he learned that Cast was dating another FBI agent, who she eventually married. But by March of 2013, Cast was back in his life, and he was happy. Olson suggested that on that fateful day, the couple's argument was sparked by Julie's discovery of Cast's undergarments in the bedroom and feared that might hinder his custody efforts. Two lengthy jury trials ended with hung juries. Art Gonzalez was tried a third time, this time on a manslaughter charge by Judge Sarah Denicky. She put forward that the defense had raised enough reasonable doubt that she was required by law to find Art Gonzalez not guilty. Roger Self and his family went to church in the morning and invited his friends and relatives to meet for lunch. When the group arrived, Self chose a table close to a window and they all sat down to eat. Just after midday on May 20th, 2018, Self excused himself from the table. His family assumed he was going to use the bathroom. Instead, he walked outside and got into his Jeep. He drove around the parking lot once. Then he accelerated to a high speed and rammed his Jeep into the dining room of the restaurant at the exact spot where he knew his family members were sitting. Oh, I'm at the Circuit Church Lodge in a part of Texas, my restaurant, and it is people. 
to put my customer. Oh my god. What's your uh, what's the address? Oh, I know I know like for is the car versus pedestrians? The car came straight through the dining room full of people. Oh, and I've got people. I think I have people trapped. I'm not real sure. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. I, I, my whole dining room is... The whole front wall of the dining room is out. The whole front room is... The whole dining room is out. The vehicle's completely... In the hey, what's your name? Oh, What's your phone number? Yes. All right. I'm Can you see? <laughs> oh my God! What kind of car is it? Okay, I'm sorry. It's a white. There's a lot of people in here. It's a SUV. It's a white SUV. I can't see the make. I've got nurses and first responders in there. The car literally ran over some of my customers. Oh my God, Jesus! Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm so bad. Okay, we got police fire and EMS on the way, okay? He's inside that car. He drove it in. Oh, honey. Oh, my God. I know what just happened. That what happened? That makes sense now. What happened? The man who... The man... Hold on. The man who is here that drove the car through the building has been in a mental breakdown. I know him personally, and I think he did it on purpose. And it was his family that he drove the car into. Jesus Christ. I know him outside of here, and... Oh, my God! You know his name, ma'am? God! I <laughs> Famous... Um... He's from Gastonia. We work out together at CrossFit. And I was contacted this week that he has um, been in a severe depression and hasn't been leaving the house. And I think him come in the door today. And I hope he's sick. So glad you're here. I chatted with his son. How's your dad doing? And he said that he was doing okay, but he's having problems. And the girls in there screaming, and that's my dad that drove the car in. That's got to be what happened. Oh, my God. Oh. Can you think they're dead? Well, I'm just I'm out here on the back of the building. I've got people trying to go That's probably the most important. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Okay, officers are here. Are they? Are they? Yeah. Are they? This is low. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh my God! All right. Are the medics coming? Like, how far away are they? Um, they're on the way as fast as they can. They're about to. They're uh, coming up. They're coming okay. to you. Okay. All right. I'm gonna go deal with see what I can help. Thank you. Okay. It looks like they're there. His daughter, Caitlin Self, and his daughter-in-law, Amanda Self, died. The crash also injured Roger Self's wife, Diane, and the couple's 38-year-old son, Joshua. Their 13-year-old grandchild was also hurt, but was treated and released from the hospital. Several others were injured. Amanda Self was a nurse in the emergency department at Caramont Health in Gastonia. She was married to Roger Self's son, Josh. Caitlin Self was a corporal in the Gaston County Sheriff's Office and engaged to be married that year. Prior to this heinous act, Self owned a successful private investigation company and was a former police officer. According to friends and family, the father struggled with mental health issues. Self's depression and paranoia had been progressive to a point where he made the decision to turn over all his guns to family members. The ex-cop was charged with two counts of second-degree murder. Joshua Self, son. <laughs> I didn't mean to hurt him. <laughs> During the trial, Self testified that the days leading up to the deadly crash were almost like a dream. He was allegedly on multiple medications trying to treat the pain he was feeling from his mental illness. Instead of getting better, he got worse. He fought back the tears for over two hours as he testified, saying he just wanted some help and that he didn't mean to hurt anyone. The part that I can remember clearly Kate, this Pat Moore, she said, it's going to be all right, Dad. 
I said, I hope so, okay. The accused told the court that he felt disconnected, and while he was aware he crashed into the restaurant, he says he didn't feel anything emotionally. A forensic psychiatrist testified that Self was racked with guilt for visiting strip clubs and massage parlors as well as having an extramarital affair. He also testified that Self took antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications but went off them before the crash. More than 20 people testified about the man's character, his changing behavior, and mental health. A witness shared stories about the incident. It was just very chaotic. There was a lot of people crying and running and trying to help. People had collapsed in the ER when they saw that it was her. His son, Joshua Self, was also called to the stand. And I remember Kate saying, what's he doing? Joshua Self said he had conversations with his father about his mental health and said his father seemed to be more depressed and less motivated after February 2018. According to Joshua, his father had suicidal thoughts at times. Self's pastor, Austin Ramel, said he noticed the accused was struggling with forgiving himself and that Self believed God condemned him for his sins. Ramel also said that he noticed Self showing signs of depression, including not sleeping, not wanting to leave the house, and having panic attacks. Amanda Self's father, Tommy George, gave an emotional account of her life, saying she was a daddy's girl, who loved to fish and hunt. The hardworking nurse was loved dearly by her colleagues. Her catchphrase, whenever they did the um, eulogy at her funeral, was, We got this, let's go. That was always Amanda saying in ER, We got this, let's go. George recalled how he loved watching his daughter care for her mother, Kathy, who suffered from an aggressive form of dementia. He ended his emotional speech with a plea to the judge. Let the grandchildren be old enough to understand what had happened before Self was released. The accused entered an Alford plea, meaning he maintained his innocence but admitted there might be enough evidence for a conviction. He was sentenced to more than 50 years in prison in 2021. After the sentencing, Self spoke to the courtroom. He apologized for the crash and the lives lost too young, although knowing that the words, I'm sorry, meant little to the victim's families. Naturally, I wished, my, I, wished I would have had an opportunity before I died to hold my family again. I'm sorry. I've said it despite what they have said here. I have been saying it to people. Caitlin Self's sister also spoke on behalf of both of the victims. As all of you know by now, I'm Kate's older sister and Amanda's sister-in-law. Kate and I were only 17 months apart. And I'm so thankful that God saw me fit to be her sister. She was by far one of my greatest joys on this earth. My constant friend in a world that's always changing. I don't remember exactly how old I was when um, Josh and Amanda got married, um, but I was blessed with being given uh, an additional sister to the one I already had. Uh, Kate and Amanda were <laughs> cut from the same fabric. They were so much alike, and they had so much fun together. Um, I hated being at any type of birthday party with the two of them because... They were planning on whose space they could put cake in. Um, to know them both was to know happiness. They were both so goofy and they could make you laugh when you didn't even want to smile. Both of them loved people with their entire hearts. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for the time that I was given with both of them. And I know that based on the relationships that we share in, in Christ that we'll be able to, um, to be with them again. Roger Self's wife, Diane, said she talks to him on the phone every day. For more True 911 calls, watch this episode next. You can also let me know which call was your favorite in the comments below.